Today our guest will be Thomas De Petrillo, costume designer, owner of the Extreme Costumes. Hello Thomas, hello Bumblebee. It's <laughs> nice to have you here. I see you're sitting comfortable. So um, please tell me, this is your first time Bumblebee at Percon Festival. And Thomas, please <laughs> tell me, how do you like the Percon Festival? Well, I, I have to tell you, this is an amazing convention. The, the people here, I've got a level of cosplay that I, I'm stunned at because I've traveled the world and the, uh, the quality here is just stellar. I've seen many people yesterday who did not uh, place who could have won first in place at many other conventions. So uh, I have to say I'm impressed. Great to hear that. And how about the masquerade contest? Did you like it? I had a blast. I mean, you know... They fed me lots of food. I get to say nice things about people. At the end of it all, they took my picture. They gave someone else all the money. But still, it was a lot of fun. Extreme costumes. Actually, I know the reason as you're sitting right in front of me. But actually, you started uh, with a simple Halloween design costume, right? Yes, yes. I only so do simple. <laughs> How did your road to success look like? Uh, very messy with lots of swerves and many crashes. But uh, I've been making costumes my entire life. Um, about 20 years ago, I made what I call my first extreme costume, which is a costume that is so outlandish that you can wow 10,000 people at once. And uh, that was just a hobby, something I did for joy. But uh, as I grew better and better at it, I continued to make uh, more money as a hobby. And then people hired me to show up at events. So after they hired me, and I started to get more and more and more, I looked at my existing business, which at that point had been a car wash, and I said, I hate washing cars. I'm, I hate vacuuming jelly beans out of somebody's back seat. And I love making costumes. So I discussed it with my family, and I decided to sell off my old business and make my full-time career nothing but making extreme costumes. Great landmark and moment when you decided to make extreme costumes. And um, speaking of hobby, because this hobby actually became your full-time job, don't you sometimes feel tired with this hobby being, the, being your work, your way of living? Never. Every single day of my life is a joy. I get flown across the world to be as an invited guest. And everyone treats me great. I get to meet more interesting people. Uh, and at the end of it all, they give me money. Who wouldn't love to do that? Uh, most of us, almost everyone in life has to pay bills. And you, know, you do things to make money, whether or not you're making pizza or washing cars or you know, interviewing strange men in rubber suits. Uh, but I do this because I love it. And then I have to make money or else I can't keep on doing it, so I ask for money. And they get to be good enough and you make enough money that you're taking care of your family and you're taking care of your employees and, you know, you're being flown across the world. That's pretty good for me. And what was the most challenging costume you've ever made? Bumblebee, was it you? <laughs> um, it's hard to say which one would be the most challenging. Uh, I hope the next one. But uh, each costume has some unique challenges. I don't typically make anything anymore unless it offers a new challenge. So each time I make something, I make another small innovation. And when you're looking at 20 years of doing that, you have many, many different innovations. So whether or not it's a different way to make a finger or a different lighting option or a new sound gimmick, you know, each time you do something, you add another piece of realism. And when you add that realism, people like it a little bit more. They may not know why they liked it. They just know they like it. And uh, I take pride in that. And um, considering Bumblebee, you, your, um, your figure, your um, equipment and all of it, actually, um, do you remember any memorable special moments while making you? How did the process of working on Bumblebee look like? Uh, I'm not sure if I understand the question properly. Could you rephrase? Um, how did the process of making Bumblebee look like? Any special memorable moments while you were ah, working I think on I see him? What you're saying. Um, well, like everyone, I go to movies, I read comic books or other things, and as I see stuff in pop culture, if something interests me, I say, could I make that? And if it's unique and different or interesting, and I don't think anyone else can do it, then I'm more likely to try it. And then I spend hundreds and hundreds of hours designing things. 
Uh, I have a special room in my house where I sit around doing nothing else but making drawings and, you know, trying out small mechanical little parts to see if it can make something happen. And at the end of that, uh, I think I can make it happen. Then I invest the next uh, two to ten months of my life in trying to create that along with a crew of really talented people. And then if we're lucky, we bring it out in public. So you're uh, actually a uh, very talented craftsman, and uh, are you uh, self-taught, or are you working with some instructors you were learning from, some people well, that uh, actually Well, naturally, work? I went to school for psychology and economics. So All right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, while those are useful skills, after all, it's nice to know how to buy things or to better understand why people do things, uh, my passion to the side was always my hobby, and no, there was no school for what I was doing. Uh, when I first started doing this stuff, there was literally no internet. Um, and so I was entirely self-taught for the longest time. But as I grew older and more experienced, I eventually bumped into the cosplay community. And there, you know, there's some amazing people out there. Not only do they make YouTube videos, but you can meet good people who could show you different techniques. And then the more I learn, the more I grow. And don't we all enjoy growing more? Yeah, so um, if you were to uh, give um, advice to aspiring costume designers, um, performers, cosplayers, what would it be? Don't be afraid to fail. There's a million failures I've had time after time after time. But no one notices those. They only say, look at the success he has. And if I had 19 failures and one success, they only point to the success. And from my point of view, all too many people I know are afraid to fail. I can't do that. That costs too much. That takes too long. No one will want to see that. Those lies they tell themselves, they keep them in check. They keep them at that job of pumping gas or something else that they hate. But they could. They could try. And even if they failed, it's better to try and fail than it is to never try at all. So being brave, actually, right? And being courageous to show your projects to the others and not being afraid of uh, getting feedback, right? Um, the recipe. I'm autistic. So I have something that's called, uh, a lot of people call it Asperger's syndrome. So I, I have to work to pay attention to know what others think or care about. And I work very hard at it. But I don't fear social shame. I don't fear rejection, because I was rejected in my whole life. That was normal to me. So while many others keenly feel that fear, that's not something that I've ever felt. So I don't fear going in front of a crowd of 10,000 people. I don't fear appearing in front of TV in front of 30 million people. Those things are just Tuesday. I wish everyone just have such an attitude, right, and be so, so brave. Thomas and Bumblebee, thank you very much for the interview. That was a pleasure to have you here and to meet you in person or in robot. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank Pride Con and all of Poland for inviting us here because we've had a blast. That is our pleasure.